I am not an outdoor person. I only like the outside when there's an inside nearby to go back to. I would not do well in hunting and gathering societies. Now some of you who are outdoor people think that you might be able to do hunting and gathering societies. But let me warn you, there's no Walmart, there's no bathroom, at least not in the sense that we know, no shower, not the best situation in my mind. However, moving from hunting and gathering society to farming, which is the foundation of the societies we still have today, might have been the worst decision we ever made as humans. Let's check out why. First, let's talk about hunting and gathering societies. Hunting and gathering societies or nomadic societies basically means people that moved around from place to place depending on their food source. They hunted animals and gathered berries and so when the animals moved and the berries or plants or whatever were out of season, they had to move in order to gather what they needed to survive. Let's talk about hunting and gathering societies. Because they moved around from place to place, these hunting and gathering peoples tend to have much more of a nutritious diet because they had a variety of foods to choose from. And they tend to be healthier, live good long lives, and have a lot of free time because once you were done hunting and gathering, you were done for the day and you could do whatever your heart wanted to do, you know, as long as the person next door to you thought it was acceptable. Hunting and gathering societies also use stone tools. So, you know, here's a rock and you would cut the rock to whatever shape you wanted for the tools to do whatever you need to do, whether it was a spear to hunt deer, buffalo, whatever part of the world you're in, that's how they use their stone tools. Another aspect of hunting and society that I particularly find interesting is that men and women were equal. And girls, this will be the only time in human history that this is true. Even today, men and women are equal across the world. The reason they were equal is because the women would gather berries and the men would hunt so everyone contributed to the society. With that, everyone was equal. So once we started farming, it all goes downhill from there, ladies. So now that we know about hunting and gathering societies, let's move on to farming, or the transition from hunting and gathering to farming, known as the Neolithic Revolution. Now that's a term that you're going to need to know. Neolithic Revolution. All it means is that we're moving from hunting and gathering to farming. Now there are a few things that are going to change in this transition. The most obvious transition is that people don't move around anymore, or at least people that farm don't move around anymore. They stay in one place because you can't farm something and then just leave it to the environment. You have to check on it, water it. You, know, you people who've ever been outside, you outdoorsy people, you know what I'm talking about. And so because they stayed in one place, people tend to do damage to the environment. If you've ever taken a biology class, then you know about ecosystems. Now you know from studying ecosystems that if a foreign source comes into the ecosystem, it will damage it. Same thing happened with farming. When people stop moving around, they damage the environment around them. So this is the beginning of man versus the planet. Because people farm food and didn't go around and gather food like they did in hunting and gathering times, people tended to not have that diverse diet and so they weren't as healthy. Think of it this way, if you have pizza, just pizza, for a week, nothing else, you probably are going to get sick. And if you don't get sick, it's because you have those freak teenage stomachs that will eventually catch up to you. I promise that one day, if you eat pizza, just pizza, for a week, you will get sick. So take this lesson to heart and start eating your vegetables. Another aspect of farming versus hunting and gathering is that people domesticate animals. Now those of you who have dogs or cats or bunny rabbits, because yes, some of us had bunny rabbits growing up, you probably adore your animal and couldn't imagine him or her not being in your life. However, when we first started domesticating animals and weren't used to being around animals, we were exposed to diseases from animals. So obviously, being exposed to these diseases were not good for humanity. I mean, I don't like getting sick. I'm sure you don't like getting sick. Another thing that happened was that the population increased. And while you think this might be a good thing, if you've ever been in a big city and been in a small building with a lot of people, 
a lot of people together in small quarters is not a good thing. It's how diseases spread. You know, so-and-so next to me got it from the cow outside, and now I have the cowpox. You make up some disease in your head, you're, you understand. Another thing about population increase is that resources were spread much more thinly than before. Say you have $100, and you split it between you and your 10 friends. Well, that's not too bad. You each get $10. But then, if you all of a sudden have 100 friends, then you only get $1. That's a significant difference in money. Same thing went with resources. The more people, especially in small quarters or in cities, the less resources went around. And again, we will see this problem throughout world history. In farming societies, we lose that equality between men and women. So now we have a patriarchal society. Say it with me. Patriarchal society. This is a term you'll need to know throughout, yes, that's right, throughout world history. Even today, there are patriarchal societies in the world. All this means is that there are men over women. Men have the control over women. So again, patriarchal society is men over women. Write down the term, highlight it, put stars by it, you will need to know this term. As we move away from the stone tools that we want to use to bronze tools, which bronze tools work a lot better than stone tools because they're heavier and sharper. Just wait until we get to iron tools, it gets even better. Because we're not moving around and because everyone doesn't have to go out in search of food, we have specialized jobs in farming societies. These can include tax collector, government official, religious official, and we'll see even more of these when we talk about early civilizations. Now nomadic people are people that move around are still going to be around while other people start farming. And these nomadic people will be around for quite some time. It's not until the world starts getting smaller, say around exploration and after that, that these nomadic groups really start to die out. And yes, because I am telling you this, you will need to be on the lookout for nomadic groups. They will be very, 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 you get the point? They will be important in world history, and the way they interact with civilizations will be important in world history. So was the Neolithic Revolution a good thing? Was it a wise decision that we moved away from hunting and gathering to farming? You tell me in the comments below. But when you do, be sure that you use historical evidence or facts to defend your point. As historians, and yes, if you are in this class, you are a historian. So as historians, we use facts to defend a point. That's how people interpret history. You know, there are definite certain facts in history, but there's also different ways to interpret those facts. So when you're arguing that this is the correct way to interpret those facts, be sure that you use the facts to defend your point. We will be doing this throughout world history, especially if you're taking AP world history. Next time, we are going to be talking about our ancient civilizations. So Egypt, Mesopotamia, Shang China, Indus Valley, Mesoamerica. And I'm sorry for you Egypt people. I'm going to do all of those in one video. I know you could do, you know, a whole semester's work just on Egypt, but we have to move on. We have all of history to cover and only a limited amount of time to do so. I promise. For you Egypt people, I'll link some interesting stuff down below. I'll see you next time.